Yesterday, yesterday's upload, I built a wheel, went and rode a bike. It's a fun video, you should go watch it, but this string, this little string of comments, has maybe kind of made me realize how, just how for granted I take the fact that uh, I have a wheel building skill. Because in my mind, I feel like it's something anyone could do. And I stand behind that, but I did. I did go on to the Sheldon Brown wheel building article that I learned how to build wheels through. And I'll be honest, having not had to like look at that kind of thing in a long time, it, even me, I was like, I don't think I can do this. So in revisiting that article, revisiting my first few wheel builds, uh, I get it. I get how it can become overwhelming. There's just so much extra information. <sighs> Where do you even start? So I am gonna take this wheel apart and I'm gonna take the next minute of this video to break down lacing a wheel into the stupid, simplest possible way that I can, that anyone could follow um, in the fewest words possible. And then hopefully it'll give you a good basis on how to start and then you can build, excuse the pun, from there. Okay, here is lacing a 32 hole wheel, three cross, as stupid simple as possible. Drop your first spoke into the hub so that the head of the spoke is like this. Find the valve hole and place your spoke into the spoke hole to the left of the valve hole. There's a subtle offset in the drilling of the spoke holes of rims, so just make sure you lace into the holes that are offset to the side of the flange you're putting spokes into. Your next spoke is one, two holes away from the you just put in, and one, two, three, four on the rim. Now do that all the way around the hub and the rim. You'll end up with something that looks like this. Okay, now flip the wheel. Referring back to the valve hole, we wanna put the next spoke in so that it runs almost parallel-ish to our original valve hole spoke. So there's the spoke next to the valve hole. And if we drop our spoke down this hole, you can see that it falls right behind our original valve hole spoke. Now, lace this spoke into the spoke hole next to our original spoke. And then go through that same hub and rim counting process as before. One, two, one, two, three, four. So here's what your wheel should look like so far. So the next spokes are gonna have to come up or through the hub like this. So the spoke is coming up and it's going to lay down. So this being your newest installed spoke, count three for it to cross over. One, two, three. And at the third one, put it underneath and lace it to the spoke hole closest to your flange. So once you got this whole group of spokes in, other side, and it is literally a carbon copy. Push a spoke through the hub, lay it over, one, two, three, lace it underneath. And then at this point, you actually only have one hole that you can put it in now, so things get a little easier. And uh, that's it. You just laced a wheel. How long did that take? So obviously, the next step for getting your wheel done and together is beginning to bring up tension, and then truing radially, laterally, until you're at the tension you want with the wheel as true and straight as you can get it. I am not going to show you how to do that because I wouldn't know how to explain it anyway. You should just, you should read this book if wheel building actually interests you. And like I've said in wheel build videos in the past, check out the Sheldon Brown link below. That is the article on how to build a wheel. And I'm gonna throw in the wheel hub spoke length calculator database as well because it's a really handy tool. So one thing that I think maybe holds some people back from actually 
getting into wheel building besides the daunting task of learning the lacing pattern and having to make those mistakes and is thinking that a wheel built at home isn't like as good or as strong or as I thought that riding a set of wheels that I built like the first ones that I ever built as an inexperienced builder was like dangerous like I wasn't they, they would just implode and fall apart underneath me not true see here is the thing wheels this design is inherently strong even built relatively poorly they are strong the first wheel set I ever built and rode was for my first fixed gear and and I gotta say the spoke tension on those things was not enough yet I still skid around on those you know hit curbs and did all the dumb stuff you do when you're a teenager on a fixed gear conversion bike and never ever was I the wiser that it wasn't a particularly great wheel build. I was just pumped that I had put together a set of wheels and that I was, I was riding them. I was on a set of wheels that I laced and put together. That's crazy. And uh, if you find yourself not totally convinced that wheels are inherently strong, I suggest you go talk to any street riding BMXer and see how many spokes are broken out of their rear wheel. Also, maybe go watch, there's a Sam Pilgrim video. They cut spokes out of their rear wheels and do crazy, just insane stuff. Down to like, I think they get down to like two spokes. That's it's a pretty good example of how strong wheels actually are as well. So definitely don't let the thought of a, a pro didn't put these together get in the way of you doing it yourself because it's actually, it's completely fine. It is not a dark art. It is not an art at all. It's just a little bit of time and effort to get into it. And once you've done it enough times that it all starts to feel like second nature and you can remember spoke lengths and you can kind of, you can eyeball flange diameters or you're happy to look up different effective rim diameters for different companies' rims, you can get really, really good at kind of messing with the stuff that you have around, kind of like I'm marginally able to do. Like with this wheel, when I destroyed the rear hub on this wheel and had to get a new one, I got this Dior LX one. I kind of looked at the flange diameter without measuring anything and I was like, yeah, that's close enough. I'm gonna reuse this rim and spoke and it worked out it worked out great. Or even on the STP, I didn't tell you, but I reused the spokes that were in it. Having the wheel building experience that I have, I was like, well, the hub that I'm putting in is, is wider, but the flange diameter is kind of the same. I'm probably gonna be like two mils short on the drive side for spoke length, but I'll deal with that later. It's fine. Does that mean there's an increased chance that nipples will break at the head and I'll have a broken spoke? when I really don't want one? Yes. Is it a risk I'm willing to take? Yes. Because no shop really wants to put their reputation on the line by reusing parts that aren't in like new condition. But I know, and you as a viewer know, there's lots of life in, in all sorts of different stuff. And when you're able to do all of it, you can just keep things going. In the end, building wheels for yourself, it is the best. They don't need to be anywhere as perfect and meticulously put together as you think they need to be. And it allows you, it just opens so many tinkering door opportunities. Opportunities behind doors for tinkering. Now, try not to think about it so much and go do it.